grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord.
we serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Christ 
according to my gospel. Here it is the epistle lesson. We join in the gradual. <laughs> Hallelujah, O oh Lord, deal with your servant according to your mercy, and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding.
of us into your family. Help us to remember and welcome with joy all those who return to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is written in the 15th chapter of Luke, reading verses 11 through 13. Please rise. We read as follows in Jesus' name. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided the property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. O Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. A parable is a story in which everything represents something more than a story in its simplest sense. Many times our Lord began a parable with the words, The kingdom of heaven is like. That means all the story is an illustration of what the kingdom of heaven what the kingdom of heaven is like, or a comparison between the kingdom of heaven, which the people do not understand. <coughs> and something that was understood. So on the surface, this parable is about a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of property that I own. And he divided unto them his goods. The youngest son showed great disrespect for his father in these words. He said, Father, I cannot wait until your death. I want my inheritance right now and to leave your house. So why did the son want out of the father's house? Well, many of us remember it was not always easy to live under the authority of our parents. They may require a lot of us, and we may think it better to live by our own rules. Dear fellow redeemed, God, had, God commanded us in the fourth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. In addition, the youngest son broke the tenth commandment. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his slave, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that belongs to him. In truth, all the father's assets should have been his until death, but the son coveted them. However, the father in his love and generosity gave them to his son. Also, we recall that the fourth commandment says more. There is a promise. Honor thy father and thy mother to be happy and live a long life on earth. God made this promise, so when the prodigal son disobeyed the fourth commandment, he lost the promise and suffered the consequences. There squandered his wealth and wild living, and when he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the land, and he began to want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. And he would have filled his belly with what the pigs eat, but no one would give him any. The prodigal son was ready to live outside the protection of guidance. The prodigal son was not ready to live outside the protection and guidance of his earthly father, nor his heavenly father. And this, brothers and sisters in Christ, is the key to understanding the meaning of the parable. The son rejected not only his earthly father, but also his heavenly father. This is where our theme comes in, the guidance of our heavenly father. The father in the parable, parable represents God the father, and the prodigal son, the rebellion of the human heart. This rebellion began in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, the first humans, when they ate of the fruit forbidden by God. In the garden they had everything, harmony among themselves, with nature, and with God. Outside the garden, the human race has suffered greatly. Disease, poverty, wars, pain, and loneliness, and ultimately death. Yet God the Father did not totally abandon humanity. He sent blessings such as rain for the harvest, children to continue his blessings of life, work, and good companions, and many other good things in our lives. And more, the Heavenly Father is a Father in the parable, 
always wanting to restore the good relationship between him and his disobedient children. He did not want any to be lost. Therefore, according to the parable, when the prodigal son repented of his sins and returned home, the father accepted him as his son again and rejoiced. When he was yet far off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and dress him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and eat and make merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found. This is an illustration of very how great God's love is for us. But we must understand that we have the opportunity to return to the house of God because of Jesus Christ. The Father sent him into the world to fulfill the law, the holy will of God, in our place, also to suffer and die on the cross in our place. So we can always repent of our sins and get back on the road home. So now we look at the second part of the parable, that of the oldest child. He symbolizes believers who have forgotten this truth. That's what Paul spoke about in our epistle lesson from Romans. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge, practice the same things. They, like the oldest son, have begun to think that they are justified by their own works. But he answered and said unto his father, Lo, these many years I have served, having never disobeyed your commandments, and you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But as soon as this thy son, which hath been borrowed by living with harlots, you killed for him the fatted calf. He then said, Son, thou art ever with me. All I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, for this your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. If we clearly understand the sacrifice of Christ for our sins, we do not trust in our own righteousness. We do not believe that we deserve God's blessings more than ours. We do not want to sit in judgment of other penitent sinners, but like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rejoice that our lost brothers have returned to the house of God in eternal life and holy baptism. And we understand the need to confess each day, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. Therefore, let us all return to the Lord's house to confess our sins, receive holy absolution and the true body and blood of Christ in the blessed sacrament. Let's leave behind the nonsense of this world and live as children of God forever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
now join in our general prayer. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise you for your goodness and mercy. You have sent your only begotten Son to become incarnate and to redeem us from sin and everlasting death. We ask you to enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit through the means of grace that we may evermore give you thanks for your grace. And may we comfort ourselves with the same in all time of tribulation and temptation. Send forth laborers into your harvest who teach the word in its truth and purity, that your joyous gospel may be heard in every land and nation. Grant health and wisdom to our government and to all who are in authority, that they may dwell in peace in this land of freedom. Send our land good weather and needed rains, that we may eat our daily bread and offer our first fruits unto you. Bless the efforts of the businessmen, workers, and all laborers to help them in their needs, providing all for their goods. Protect our homes and family from all danger of body and soul, that we may live a life pleasing to you here on earth, and hereafter life eternally with you and all our brothers who have gone before us. Also this day, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for our earthly fathers, those to whom you have entrusted the responsibility to provide loving protection for their families and guidance for their children. May our earthly fathers follow the will of our Father in heaven in providing wise counsel to the children you have given to their care. Give them valiant faith in the face of confusion and conflict, hope in time of trouble and sorrow, and steadfast love for you, for their families, and for all your people throughout the world. We ask this blessing on all those to whom you have entrusted fatherhood. We ask this all in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn. <laughs>
Blessed Lord, who has caused all the Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by the patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end.
sale Friday, June 22nd, 8 to 6, 23rd, 8 to 3. Still open for people to sign up to help and please bring your donations to the church. Uh, there's a call meeting for Calvary and Grace at 5.30 on June 24th in Ulan. Uh, on July 1st, Noah Thompson will be installed and ordinated up at River Heights in East Grand Forks at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And I am pretty sure they have a separate follow for anybody who wants to go up there. Um, we've set the date for BBS of July 23rd through the 25th. Monday and Tuesday it will be 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Wednesday 9 a.m. to 12.30. Food and snacks will be provided. I'm not sure how far that uh, pastors talk with people about donations for food and snacks and so on, but we've got some time for that yet. Um, I think that's it, other than welcome again to our guests, and happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Hope you have a great day.